Welcome my allies from all around. This is Frontline and today in this video we are going to be talking about observers. So you may have noticed that whenever you're uh, playing with observers inside of Minecraft uh, they have a little bit of a tendency to perhaps be able to go around and loop themselves. Now uh, this is a very uh, specific scenario in which this may happen in which uh, if you say have a pumpkin farm here uh, let's say this guy just grows onto here, it will uh, detect that, be able to uh, break it, and it's a really good farm. Except for one thing, uh, if you may do this, or if, if you do this, it will uh, be able to uh, loop around, creating an infinite loop that uh, kind of ruins the efficiency of your farm, because whenever this piston is extended, it doesn't allow for the pumpkin to uh, grow during that time. Obviously it can grow in between that time, but it just makes it so that it has this infinite loop. It can lag your world with this infinite redstone clock. So let's just break this to make sure that it doesn't keep on going forever. What can you do about this? Well, there are some solutions that uh, you can do just for this specific scenario. Uh, perhaps have it so that the observer is on the stem. But sometimes you might not actually have the alternative. You uh, may want to be able to, um, say, make a tree farm that uh, needs to be able to uh, push a block whenever it's detected and you don't want it to do this infinite loop thing. This is the reason why I've devised a solution that I actually used in a minigame at one point, but I've repurposed it for this video here. So if I uh, turn around behind me, this is basically the solution I've created. Uh, it's an implementation of a pseudo etho hopper clock, but it only gets activated when a redstone pulse goes through the system. So uh, as you can see here, if I just uh, end up, I don't think I can place a pumpkin here because it needs like a block below it. So let's just grab this block of iron here. If I go ahead and do this, it does not create an infinite loop and uh, instead allows it so that uh, whenever a block is uh, placed there, it's able to uh, go ahead and not have anything be worried about. Uh, there are some downsides to this, uh, not uh, too significant in uh, most cases, but uh, if you want to keep on pushing blocks uh, as much as you can, if you place it before a certain time frame, it doesn't detect the block anymore, uh, as well as uh, other different factors like uh, it does uh, take quite a bit of resources to make, but uh, in many cases it is worth it to be able to make sure that your clocks don't, uh, or you don't create a unintended clock in your farms. So anyway, let's go ahead and go into the tutorial aspect on this of how you can actually build this thing. So for this first part of the tutorial, I'm not going to mention too much about the input. We're going to worry about that a little bit later. For now, all you need to know is that this redstone repair here is where the input is coming from, from the observer. So uh, you would be able to uh, build it in that kind of a way. So here we go. We're going to just kind of, from this input, place down a couple of uh, blocks right here. We're going to also do them to the sides there. You don't need uh, those blocks there. Uh, then we go ahead, go around the back, be able to uh, place them in this kind of a formation so that the redstone is able to work its way around from the top here, work its way down around the side, and then have repeaters running this way. They will eventually be running into blocks, but we're not going to worry about that now. That's what we're going to be doing when we build the blue circuit. The blue circuit does have a lot of intricacies to it, but hopefully it shouldn't be too hard to build. So basically, like I said, you have these going into blocks, I'm color labeling them blue because uh, this part of the circuit is the part that carries the timer. Right here was the input that activates the timer, but now we're actually implementing this part of the circuit. So here we go. We're going to be able to have hoppers running into each other here. Uh, if you're flying in a creative world, uh, you should be able to both crouch and uh, try and fly up at the same time. That'll allow you to place these right into here. If you're not in a creative world, just go ahead and crouch and you'd be able to do the same exact thing on a solid block. So uh, here, you'd be able to run comparators into the sides of the blocks here. Uh, then you will be able to grab something that I don't actually have in my uh, inventory at the moment, and that's a torch. Torches will go right here on top or uh, on the sides of these blocks with blocks on top of them. And then 
be able to have blocks in front of these. Uh, from there, we're actually going to go ahead and build the stuff in the middle so that we can take care of that. So uh, here we can have this piston here. You'll see it's extended. I would suggest pr placing the block of redstone here first and then place this piston so that you don't have the uh, problem of not being able to place the block as uh, if you see here, if you don't have the block, it's not really uh, very easy to go ahead and place a block in the middle of them. So like I said, have a block of redstone there, be able to have the other piston right there. They need to be sticky pistons, by the way. That's the way that it works, and it won't work if it's normal pistons. So uh, now we're going to extend this part. Uh, we need to have the blocks. Make sure they're above the pistons. We don't want them to be able to activate the pistons at all so that uh, they're independent of what the circuit is. We're going to have it so that uh, redstone runs on these six blocks, and then you'll see that it's all lit up and activated at the moment. Now, what we want to be able to do is actually grab a couple more pieces of redstone. It will vary depending on uh, what kind of circumstance you have. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to place in three bits of redstone dust so that it will be able to work for the purposes that I demonstrated earlier in that build. Before we build the red circuit, I want to build the actual input to the system now that we kind of know where the rest of the components are going to be. So over here, basically how the input is going to work is that from the system, you're going to want to make sure that you have a redstone line that runs to it from an observer that uh, we're just going to place right here so that its output is able to run through the system just like that. Uh, from that, you're going to want to make sure that uh, when the observer is being taken output from the repeater, make sure that it's on four ticks. That way the timing will be able to work out with the system with a long enough pulse that this thing will be able to handle it. So for our system that we're going to uh, make, we're going to have the piston be facing this way to be able to go ahead and activate it and push blocks wherever we want to. Obviously in this case, you might not want it to particularly do this as when the piston pushes the blocks, it's gonna try and push it over the redstone, which isn't really a uh, normal thing that you would want to do and you might want to reposition this somewhere else but for now because this is an easier way for you to be able to see what the rest of the system is doing as this does its own thing i'm going to keep it there over here you're going to want to be able to have this go upward be able to have a block on top of there and technically you can have blocks here but I'm going to have half slabs so you can see the system better. Again, blocks will work, but I'm going to uh, be able to create the system like that so you have a little bit more of a uh, eye to see what we're gonna put behind there with the red circuit. So this is basically all done right here for the input. The observer will be able to activate the piston from this uh, tower here, and it will be able to activate the timer. Now we just need to link them up so that make sure that this does not reach an infinite loop. Okay, there was one thing I missed when I created this though. Uh, I will mention that you'll want to adjust the timing a little bit so that the piston isn't activated immediately. If the piston is activated immediately, this timer won't actually have enough time to be able to process the request. So uh, again, you're gonna have to work a little bit with uh, the timing schemes but if you build this the way that I do, it shouldn't be too hard to adjust. It's mostly you'll want to adjust uh, repeater times and how many items are in this hopper, and that should be able to get you what you need. As I mentioned earlier, all six of these blocks can be used as output. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go ahead and just line up this output this way so that we're able to go ahead and have the line uh, go all the way through Make sure that it's all connected though, because if you only take the signal from this block here, it's not going to account for if this torch is on and this torch is off. So you'll want the whole entire thing to be all connected, and then you'll just kind of run it this way. For the purpose of this, we're just going to end up having a red block here to signify that this is the official output of the system that will be able to go ahead and uh, run the line down. We're going to have a redstone torch so it can invert the signal because as this works right now, this whole entire line will be on as long as the system is not running. We want the opposite. We want it to be only when the system is running 
does this redstone torch turn on? So we're going to run this up around here and uh, be able to have a uh, repeater right here running into this line to hop, lock it off. Uh, then from knowing that the repeater is going to be there, we can just run the redstone line around so that it connects up. The reason I place the uh, torch here is so that this redstone here does not connect with a green circuit. By the way, if you're wondering exactly why I decided to place it here, it doesn't necessarily need to be lined up exactly like the way I built it, but this is the way I'm going to do it for this demonstration. So around here, you can see that whenever this system is activated, this will be able to turn on, it'll lock that repeater. And basically the point of that is so that whenever this observer uh, realizes that the piston is uh, trying to uh, update the block one more time, it doesn't activate the system a second time. It goes ahead and is all like, okay, I'm like the repeater is locked. There's nothing I can do. It's just going to uh, stay there. So now we can go ahead and demonstrate, make sure that everything's working. And uh, it's basically, it just kind of is able to go. It pushes it. This repeater was still locked so that uh, it didn't fire a second time. You're able to do it again. It's able to uh, be fine, able to do it another time and so on. Uh, that's basically how the system works. And of course it will need to be varied. Uh, you will be able to also have uh, different lines going other places. It's very customizable. It's just, this is the uh, small section that I wanted to discuss in the tutorial today that this clock here or this timer will be able to make it so that uh, it'll only detect the observer once. This is a very big build, and you might not want to use up all the resources that it takes to be able to build this in survival. But there are very many farms in which this will be necessary of a system to have so that you can make sure that this issue doesn't happen. Like I said, redstone uh, doesn't always have only one solution. In some cases, if you're just making a uh, melon farm or something, I would very much suggest just moving the observer to a different place in which the piston won't affect it. It's just that this solution is for when you cannot do that, when you need the observer to observe the block that the piston will affect. But anyway, my allies, this is the redstone build that I wanted to showcase today. One that you're able to use in different kinds of redstone projects that you may be stuck on, things that you uh, don't really want the observer to be able to keep on affecting your redstone in a negative way. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to use it in your builds. But anyway, that is all for this episode. I would promise that it would go on forever, but that would be a lie. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye.